Want to master LinkedIn ads retargeting even if you're a total beginner? LinkedIn ads retargeting is the holy grail of full funnel marketing, delivering the highest return on ad spend by focusing on warm prospects who've already shown interest. In this video, I'm going to walk you through step by step exactly how to set up retargeting and LinkedIn ads in just a few clicks. Now, LinkedIn has 10 types of retargeting on the platform, and I'm going to show you all of them, including one bonus one. Let's jump in. All right, so here we are on LinkedIn. Let's head over to our ad account. You might see it say advertise here. Um, for me, it says advertise over here. And let's head over to your ad account. Uh, you might have one listed. I have quite a few. All right, so to get started with retargeting, we're going to build some audiences. So under plan, click on audiences. And we're going to create a matched audience. So a matched audience is basically we're matching to specific people on LinkedIn. All right, so it's very extensive, the types of people we can retarget. We can upload a list of companies or people that we want to show ads to. We can also retarget people who've come to the website, people who've clicked on an image or engaged with a document ad, people who've even watched a video, opened a lead gen form. There's a lot. They've come to the company page. Um, they've gone to an event. So there's a lot of options to choose from here. Now I get asked all the time, Tom, is there a direct way I can retarget my connections on LinkedIn? And the short answer is no, but it's not a concern because we can use LinkedIn's targeting options and retargeting options to narrow in our ICP and get all the right people we want in our audience anyway. All right, so let's start creating our retargeting audience. So we're going to create a matched audience and we're going to do website visitors because this is most familiar to most people. The only difference with the website retargeting is we have to have LinkedIn's pixel, also known as the insight tag installed on the website. So to install the insight tag, you come to data and signals manager and click on insight tag right here. And LinkedIn will give you a few different options to install the insight tag. If you really don't know how to do it or don't want to, you can send the tag to developer, click proceed. And so basically it will send you the tag and then you can just send it off to your developer. If you want to do it yourself, you basically copy the code here, click this button, it will copy it. And you can throw this code right into your website. And it tells you here where in the code to install it. You can also use a plugin in WordPress to make it easier for yourself. If your website's using Google Tag Manager, you can copy your partner ID here and then just click here to follow the instructions. Once your insight tag is active, it should show up here as active. Um, but that might take 24 hours for it to show up like that. Another way to confirm that it's firing before it's actually showing up as active in here is you can go to your website uh, and you can use this extension called Insight Tag Checker. Uh, click Inspect and it will show uh, the partner ID and that it's installed. All right, so let's create our website retargeting audience. Click here, next. All right, so now we have a few different options. Um, we can choose um, how far in the past we want that retargeting audience to go for. Um, it won't take retroactive data, so it'll be starting as soon as you have installed the tag and it start tracking going forward. Um, so if you installed it 90 days ago, we'll have 90 days of data. So you can pick the time period that you want. Um, you can also look across pages. You can look across buttons. Um, one way to do this, if you want to target everyone hitting your website, is you can just add the domain of your website. Um, and then you can add that as... Uh, let's see, contain. So anyone that's hitting the website domain for any web page, um, you can retarget all of those people. You can also add further rules. Like let's say if you have a page on your website that, um, I don't know, maybe shows that they're pretty high intent. Like let's say it's a services page or a contact page. We might want to retarget people that are only hitting a page with the URL that contains services in it um, or starts with something or equals something. There's or rules here. So maybe you want to list out, I don't know, 10 different pages if you want. Um, but LinkedIn now provides this beautiful table. So you can go in and check off the uh, pages that you want to be retargeted by. You can also look at um, that someone clicks certain buttons. So there's some good options here. Also, if you have um, more than one domain, you know, sometimes you'll see a test or development domain pop up here. Um, just make sure that you have, it'll give you a drop down and you can choose the right domain. I want to highlight that because we can choose different time periods to retarget our website visitors with, we might choose something a little more aggressive for people for the last 30 days. But for people who have come, let's say for the last six months, it might be less aggressive. And if we build both of these audiences, then we can take the 180 day audience and make sure we're not giving them the aggressive one. So we can exclude the 30 day people, the recent people. So we have a couple of different options there. All right, so to create this one, let's just give it a name. We'll call it um, 90. And then we'll just retarget anyone who's come to the website. So if the URL contains the domain name, next step, agree and create. All right, so now the audience is created. Now it's really important to note that you have to have at least 300 people 
um, in an audience to be able to use that audience to run ads to them. So let's say, for example, you get 400 website visitors. Some of them might be the same people or some of them might not be logged in, into LinkedIn. So um, you have to wait until that audience gets big enough and then you can start retargeting them. All right, let's go ahead and create another one. One of the most important ones is uploading a list of companies or contacts. Uh, this is super important if you're doing account-based marketing, you wanna get in front of certain companies or certain uh, people. And so this dropdown here is really important. Um, if you're doing contacts, you're gonna do contact list. Um, but if it's a list of companies, you're gonna do a company list. And you see down here, there's a template and there's two different templates. So for contacts, there's one template and for companies, there's another one. So when you click here, it'll download the template. Let's open it up. And so you're gonna see exactly what the template should be for the information you're gonna upload. So you don't need to fill in every single um, one of these um, fields, right? It might not be a publicly traded company and that sort of thing. But when you upload this list of companies, um, let's say you put 100 or 500 companies in here, LinkedIn is gonna try its best to match the company name and information you put in here to the actual company and those employees at that company, the people working there. So to get the most accurate matching out of LinkedIn, if you happen to have uh, the company page URL, you wanna go with that. And that's really all you need. You could just fill in this one column, re-upload it back into LinkedIn and you're good. If you don't have that, maybe you just have the list of websites. Um, I would go with that as a uh, second best. The email domain's a little superfluous. Company name can be wrong um, because there might be, you know, uh, a dozen companies with a similar name. So um, I'd be careful with that one. And once you have the list ready, you're just gonna upload the file give it a name and click agree and upload and you're all done. It's pretty similar for a list of contacts. So let's go through this again. We're gonna download the, the contact list here. Um, and so first name, last name, job title, uh, company name. Um, the most accurate thing, if you have a list of email addresses, that's probably gonna be the most accurate. The problem is uh, a lot of companies like yourself might have a list of business email addresses, work email addresses, but not their personal. A lot of people have their personal email address connected to their LinkedIn profile. So um, second best, you've got first name, last name, job title, and company name. So it's the same thing. Once you have that list ready, you just upload it, give it a name, and submit it. All right, let's move on to one of my favorites, which is video. So we can retarget people who've been watching your videos. And um, in this case, let me make this a little longer. We can retarget people who have watched half of your video, 75% of your video. Um, if you don't have much in the beginning, you can go with 25%, give it a name. Um, and you, know, you can select maybe all the videos, whatever you want, and click agree and create. And boom, now you have an audience of video viewers that you can retarget. Again, this will take about maybe 48 hours, 24 hours for LinkedIn to match all of those people and get the audience ready for you. We can also retarget people who have engaged with one image. A lot of campaigns and ads are going to be image ads. Uh, and so anyone who interacted with it or maybe they performed a chargeable click, um, not a huge deal either way. So you can pick the campaigns you wanna retarget with those image ads and you're good to go there. Another option is lead gen forms. So you can retarget anyone who opened the lead gen form or only the people who submitted the lead gen form. So select the campaigns you want. Uh, you can give it a name and create the audience. Another option we have here is document ads. So we can retarget people who interacted with the document ads. Again, you can look at a few different options here. Uh, pick the campaigns you want, uh, give it a name and create that audience. And the list continues. So we can retarget people who have engaged with a conversation ad. We can retarget people who've hit the company page. Uh, we can retarget people who have said that they're going to attend an event. Um, and this one is a little more advanced. So there you have 10 different ways that you can retarget people. And keep in mind that these retargeting audiences will be automatically updated. So um, if someone new comes and is engaging with your um, ad today, um, that will also go into your retargeting audience. Now to give you that bonus retargeting I mentioned in the beginning of this video that's not included here, LinkedIn has the capability to take anyone and everyone in your entire CRM and send them back into LinkedIn as an audience automatically and keep it updated and retarget that list of people. You can use a custom list for any people in your CRM. And this is so important because you have a treasure trove of data of contacts and leads in your CRM that you've built up over time. And you can use that data to retarget those people on LinkedIn automatically. Here's an example if you're using HubSpot. 
So come over here to marketing and then go to ads. And in the top right, click create, click audience. All right, so we're gonna create the audience that'll go back into LinkedIn. So this will be a contact list. We'll select the audience. Let's just do all contacts for now. They have to be marketing contacts. So in this case, it wouldn't really work out so well. And then you just click to create the audience. Once the audience is created, it'll get sent back into LinkedIn. So here's an example. Uh, this audience got sent back into LinkedIn from HubSpot. All right, now that we've got our retargeting audiences ready to go, uh, let's create some ads. So we'll come over to advertise. We'll create a campaign. We'll choose an objective. Uh, maybe our objective here might be brand awareness. We're going to select the group that it'll be part of. So let's add it to this group. All right, and we'll give it a name. We've already chosen the objective, brand awareness. That'll basically be impressions. So now here's where we can add the audience. So if we uploaded that list of contacts or companies, that would be here under list upload. Um, the third party ones like we just saw with HubSpot would be here. And retargeting is gonna be pretty much everything else. Um, so we can look at the website uh, audiences. Let's add this puppy in. Now, one important thing I did want to mention before we get too far ahead of ourselves is, you know, not everyone hitting the website is someone we really want to spend money to retarget. Um, we can narrow this down further, right? We might want to say that um, we want to retarget people who uh, maybe they have some seniority, you know, maybe it's the, uh, the CEOs, the VPs, directors, Maybe they're partners and owners, but we really don't want to be retargeting, you know, people who are training or entry level. We can obviously narrow down by a lot of different dimensions. Um, we can say that um, maybe their company has to be in a certain industry uh, and choose that industry. Or we can say maybe their company has to be a certain size. Um, or we can go back and say, you know, maybe it's certain uh, functions, right? So we only want to target people in accounting and certain things. We can exclude people. Um, we can exclude people that are irrelevant for us. Now, it's really important if you look over here on the right, we'll see the audience size. And if it starts to get too small, it's not going to be worthwhile for us. So I've added a bunch of, you know, junk targeting in here just to get this audience size really small. Um, and you don't want it too small, right? Ideally, perfect audiences would be at least 20,000 people, maybe 50,000. But when you're retargeting, you don't really have huge audiences. Um, so let's remove these. This would be like 35,000. That's amazing. Probably your targeting audiences won't be huge, but at least try to get it in the thousands, you know, try to get at least a thousand or 2000, um, something where we can actually serve the ads that there's enough people coming online. Um, if it's, you know, a thousand people or a few hundred people, the ads will probably not even serve. And if it's that small, that is one of the rare and unusual cases where I would say, Hey, you know what, let's go with maximum delivery or just put the bid really high. Uh, maybe we just put this bid at like, you know, we'll take a, a whatever, a $50, $75 CPM. It doesn't matter because these people are so important to us. And there's not really, you know, in that case, that many of them getting online that can see the ads. And now we have this audience ready to retarget to. Uh, after that, we'll choose what um, we want to show them. Maybe we're going to show them image ads. Uh, and then we'll move on. You know, we'll change some settings here. We'll want to turn that off. Uh, we'll want to bid based on impressions, right? Because we don't want LinkedIn to pay for us. They will overspend for us. So let's choose a bidding option that's a lot lower. Um, let's think maybe it's, I don't know, uh, $25 might be the CPM. Uh, and let's move on. And then we'll start adding the ads. So we'll create a new ad. Uh, you can give it a name. Uh, we can upload the image we want to use. Once that's all ready to go, we'll um, save the ad and launch the campaign. And that's it. Happy retargeting.